Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, today is going to be one of my favorite lessons because it's going to answer a question that I get probably the most. And while people don't realize what they're asking me, I understand what they're asking me, but to describe what they're asking me is very difficult. And the question is, how do you do it? How do you pick the right color? How do you know the right color? And today I'm going to show you how to choose the right color in a way that everybody can do it. I'm going to start by talking about color recognition. Color recognition is a cognitive skill that children are taught when they were very young. It puts a name to the colors which is very important. You want your children to look at a red object. And I'm not talking about somebody who has color blindness. I'm talking about somebody with normal vision. They're going to look at red and they're going to know that's a red. When you show a child something blue, you say to them, oh, what color is that? And this starts very, very young. I mean, really, as soon as they're able to verbalize, you begin to teach them the color recognition. We're going to learn color recognition for adults. There are, let's see, there are two types of cells that are in your in your eyes. They are photoreceptive cells. They're called rods and cones. What we're going to concentrate on today is just the cones. Okay? Rods rods give you the ability to see in dim light. Cones give you the ability to see the wavelengths in the colors. Humans see ultra in the ultraviolet light spectrum. There are three types of cones in the eyes for people with normal vision. There is a fourth type of receptive cell that a person can have. It's very, very rare. Um, I don't know if I have that. I, I see colors what I think is differently than most people. My color recognition is really good. It's very strong, but I don't really know if it comes from a biological ability that I do have this fourth receptor or it has, um, it's a learned skill. I can't answer that, but I do know that you can develop a better cognition for the pencils. If you have a better cognition for the pencils, you will see colors better and be able to choose your colors better. And I'm going to prove this in, in just a few minutes. There are three types of cones, the S, the M, and the L. And these are receptors for wavelengths. And it's very easily named. Um, the S is for short uh, wavelengths, medium late wavelengths, and long wavelengths. And they match up with the different colors, um, the blue, reds, the greens in your arm so that you could perceive color. Actually, there is no color. Color is something that is perceived. It's in your brain. You get a stimulus to these cones from an object from the amount of light that they absorb and the amount of light that they the amount of light an object absorbs and the amount of light an object reflects will give you the wavelength for that color. That color um, is perceived by these cones that are in your eyes. It's transmitted to the optic nerve and then interpreted in the brain. A lot of times you're able to see what you are able to communicate. And I'm going to give you an example of this. Um, in my formal life, at some point in my life, before I moved here, I used to be the director of an animal welfare organization, and we specialized in reptiles. For some people, when you look at a snake, it looks like a snake. For other people who have learned about the different types of snake will look at one snake looking like a corn snake, while another snake looks like garter snake and one is a boa constrictor and one's a python and on and on and on. But if you don't have the word to communicate what that difference is between the different species, 
you're not going to recognize it. Once you're able to verbalize the difference as a cognitive word, you put meaning to that specific object. And we're going to talk about this when it comes to pencils. When you received your um, 150 box or how many pencils you got, a lot of the colors are going to look very close. And you're going to think to yourself, hmm, which one do I use? Now here I took out some pencils that are very similar in color. I want you to start by looking at these five pencils. White, cloud blue, powder blue, sky blue light, and 10% cool gray. When you first got your pencil sets and you took a look and you saw that you had these five colors, bet your anxiety went up because you didn't have a way to identify them. They were extremely similar looking, but they do such drastically different things. These are the colors that you would use when coloring in clouds. Once you learn to recognize that there is a difference between these colors, and then you look up at the clouds, you will notice clouds are not white. Everybody thinks clouds are white. Clouds are, are not white. Clouds are a mixture of different colors, and a lot of them are blues and grays that are mixed into the cloud that make it look like a cloud. So here you have these five colors and you're going to add to your cognitive ability to recognize that these five colors are all different. Okay? They're different. They may look similar, but they're different. When you put these colors together, you're going to form clouds. Over here are a group of other very similar colors. Now, I'm not talking about the paint per se, but I'm talking about when you're actually using them. And here we have um, lime peel and sap green light. If I take these colors and I draw them out, To your eye, it has a very slight difference. And you might say to yourself when you begin to draw that it doesn't really matter. What's the difference? You use this one or this one. It looks virtually the same, but it's not. Now you're adding in two more cognitive different pencils. This one, you could see there is more gray in. This one you could see is much more yellow. At the beginning, you might not have recognized that. Once you're able to recognize it, verbalize it, and memorize it, you're going to be able to see it. And when you're looking at an object, you're going to be able to see the difference. You're going to be able to see the subtleties that make it different. And this goes on and on in the pencils that we have. Um, I used to say that non-photo blue and electric blue were almost identical. And yet, in some cases, you can use them by interchanging them. They're both very bright, vibrant blues. They're both on the redder side of the blue spectrum. And they both could be substituted for neon blue when you're coloring. They have, like, the same effect. When you look at them... side by side, it's a very subtle difference. You have the electric blue, which is slightly more dark. When you put them together, even though they're similar, they're not really interchangeable because one is darker. This goes on and on in the pencil set. So how are you going to ever be able to memorize and, and tell that there are these differences? I have a couple of stories 
that I want to um, tell you that will help you. Okay. My mother was, uh, God rest her soul, one of the best pianists that I ever knew. Not that I knew a lot of pianists, but she was really good. And what made it really cool having my mother be this type of pianist is that when I was a teenager, I used to be able to play any rock and roll song on any album. And my mother, like, as, as joking around, hey, Ma, go play this on the piano. And she would walk right over to the piano without any music sitting in front of her. She would just play it. And it used to astound me. And I used to, like, like brag on it with my friends. Oh, check my mother out. My mother would be like doing something else. And I'd be call her over and, you know, you know, name that song. And my mother would play it. And I have absolutely no musical ability whatsoever. But I remember when I was young, I had to take piano lessons because you don't have your mother playing piano like that. And you don't take music lessons. So I did play the piano and I took lessons for about six years. I managed to be able to squeak out chopsticks. Just wasn't my thing. And there were two teachers. I had Mrs. Joffrey and she say taught half the town and this other woman, um, I think her name was Miss Sheldon. She taught the other half of the town and they were both good teachers, but I couldn't stand having Miss Jeffries. I wanted to have Miss Sheldon's as my piano teacher because Miss Sheldon used to teach what the kids wanted to play. So if I wanted to play Stairway to Heaven, she would, you know, make sure I had the sheet music and I would play Stairway to Heaven. But Miss, my teacher, Miss Joffreys, she would play notes. <laughs> And every week she would play like five notes. And then my mother would sit at the piano and I would sit across the room and I had to recognize the sound of the note. And at the end of the week, I had to get my five notes done. I had to get them perfect on my, my piano lesson because you just, you took piano lessons and that's what you did. You practiced and it would drive me nuts. I didn't see the purpose in it, but my mother had to do that. And when my mother was young and her piano teacher taught it, she got it. She understood it. So later on, she had the ability to say, oh, that's middle C, that's D, that's E, that's an F sharp. And she, my mother would hear these things and she would be able to just play. Um, I think they call, it's called sight playing or sight reading. I, I forgot there's a term for it in playing the piano. There is no good musician that can't do it. And that's what I want you to be able to do. I want you to recognize the individual colors by sight. I want you to be able to go, oh, that's electric blue. Oh God, that looks almost alike, but that's non-photo blue. They're just almost alike but you can recognize it. So when you see it, say on a wall or on a picture, you're not going to now see just blue. You're going to actually see in your mind, non-photo blue, you're going to recognize that there are two blues and you're not going to be able to do that until you memorize it. There is a um, artist on YouTube, and I'll put the, his name and his URL. I f completely forgot what it is off the top of my head, but I have it bookmarked. He's blind. He's one of the best artists. He's never seen his child's face, but he drew his child. He's never seen his wife, but he drew her picture and that's because you don't need to see to be able to see in your mind and bring it onto the paper he was able to use his other senses he was able to use touch the feel of each individual color paint which is actually different um the thickness in the paint and he's mag he is recognized and magnificent beethoven 
After he went deaf, he composed some of his greatest works without being able to hear the notes. Why? Because the notes were already in his brain. He had cognitive learning of those notes. Did it make him a musical genius? It made him a genius. He had a skill, but it's not much different than somebody who can recognize color in their mind. He was able to recognize the notes. He was able to hear the notes as without being able to see. When I went to um, art school and when my daughter went to art school and I laughed when she came home with the same project, she had to draw blind. She actually had to put, put a blindfold on and draw a picture because what the teachers were trying to teach her is to see it in your mind, not in the physical form. And that's only going to come with practice. And I'm going to give you some exercises today to be able to get you to do this. Somebody asked me the other day um, about a pearl. She wanted to, me to teach her how to um, draw a pearl. And I didn't, I gave her the colors of the pearl, the, the, um, the white, the gray, the light blue, the sli a slight bit of pink in it, um, catching the light in a certain way. I didn't need to look up and look at a pearl for this. In my mind, I already saw 10%, like in this spot, there's 10% gray. There's white, there's 10% gray. Because I could recognize 10% gray. And it looks different to me than 20% gray. Now, if you're colorblind and you've never seen colors portraying it into the brain, it may be a little bit dif difficult. Um, I would suggest maybe painting. I can't. I mean, when I'm talking about this is a this is a person that has normal cones in their eye, and you're able to discern just not at the superhuman level. But at the normal level, it's because of cognition. I recognize it. I know it. It now looks different. If you look at a optical illusion and you don't see it at the beginning and then you see it and you think to yourself, oh, my God, I how did I not see that? Or you look at one of these pictures, like sometimes on the internet, and there's a hidden object, like a cat, and there's like 10 cats on a shelf, and they blend into the shelf or the wall or whatever, the bookcase that they're on. And then you, you're shown, there's a cat here, there's a cat here, there's a cat here. And all of a sudden, it's like you look at this picture like, wow, why didn't I see that before? Because... Your brain didn't see it because they saw shelves. Then they saw the cat. And then they were able to see it in the mind where you can't unsee it. This is what I want you to do. You can't unsee the color. So let's learn how to do this. We're about to hit the 20 minute mark on this video. I will put out part two today. They'll go together so you don't have to wait. Um, I'll just have, I'm going to have uploading problems if I try to upload too much. So I will see you in part two.